Trash talking can be a lot of fun, but you gotta be able to back that up or it could blow up in your face. Football is a competitive sport and the NFL is the pinnacle of that competition. So it isn't surprising that trash talk can play a pretty big role in the game. Not all players do it, but there have been quite a few guys over the years who love to let their opponent hear it when they're beating them. Unfortunately, not all of the players that talk trash are prepared to back it up. And they end up embarrassing themselves worse than they would have if they said nothing at all. Let's take a look at 10 NFL trash talkers, past and present, who love to talk the talk, but could never walk the walk. In many ways, Brian Bosworth, the former standout linebacker at the University of Oklahoma, was the forefather for this crop of unsuccessful trash talkers. Between his master plan to manipulate the draft completely failing, and his career turning into a complete disappointment as he flamed out of the league within two seasons with shoulder problems, his entire story is that of a player who ran his mouth and couldn't back it up. Perhaps the most notable instance of this came ahead of a matchup with the then Los Angeles Raiders, as Bosworth publicly claimed that he was going to contain Bo Jackson. Unfortunately for the Boz, Jackson ran wild against the Seattle defense for 221 yards and three touchdowns, one of which he blasted right through the Seahawks linebacker to score. After that play, Jackson allegedly told Bosworth, next time make sure you have a bus fare. See Brian, that is how you back up your trash talk. Interestingly, it was actually during his formative years at OU that the Boz's reputation as a loudmouth, almost larger than life character, began to develop. He played three seasons for the Sooners and was recognized as the consensus All-American in both his sophomore and junior years, but was followed around by steroid allegations. Between his propensity for running his mouth, the role he played on a program eternally in the national consciousness, and his hairstyles, which were rather radical for the time. Bosworth was a media darling, or fodder, depending on how you looked at it. It's too bad he was never able to live up the hype at the professional level, because while controversial, he was a great collegiate player. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Brian Bosworth isn't the only linebacker to run his mouth without doing much to back it up. There's also former All-Pro and Pro Bowler Bart Scott, who played for the Ravens from 2002 to 2009, before finishing out his career with the Jets. Scott's most notable flop came in 2011, shortly after he and the Jets completed a shocking defeat of the New England Patriots in the AFC Divisional Playoffs. ESPN Sal Polantonio approached the linebacker for an interview, during which Scott flew off the handle and delivered a rant berating the non-believers. All we hear is about their defense. They can't stop a nosebleed. Scott finished the back and forth with two infamous words. Can't wait. In regards to their subsequent matchup with the Pittsburgh Steelers in the AFC Championship game. Unfortunately for all that bravado, Scott and the rest of the Jets' defense let Pittsburgh jump out to a 24-0 lead that following week. Their play did improve in the second half. But it was a little too late, and all that can't wait energy was proven to be nothing more than hot air. I suppose while we are in New York during the early 2010s, there really is no better time to talk about Rex Ryan, the lone coach on this list. There's actually an argument to be made for both his father, Buddy, and his brother, Rob. But when you look through Rex's discography, his failures as a trash talker are truly next level. To his defense, part of Rex's problem was that his mouth was emboldened by a couple of early rants that his team actually did back up, like when he successfully guaranteed a playoff victory over the Patriots in 2011. And this was after he told WFAN Radio in New York that he never came to kiss Bill Belichick's, you know, ranks. Rex was flying high on his early success in New York. His defense was ferocious, and the team was having success. Unfortunately, his loud mouth ways caught up with him, and it started to write checks that he and his teams couldn't cash. One instance came in 2014 when he said, somebody asked me if we focus on New England. Expletive. We're focused on us, and how are we going to get better? I don't worry about them. They need to worry about us. I'm all in for confidence, I guess, but maybe temper it a little bit when you're playing the kings of your division. While your team has a messy 1-5 record, that's about to become 1-6. But that was how it was for the tail end of Rex's tenure with the Jets. And once he headed north to take the job in Buffalo, the trash talk just became kind of sad. It felt more like a character he was playing than the fiery head coach that was sticking it to the bully of the AFC East back in 2009 and 2010. And if you get a kick out of Ryan's failed trash talk, you will love Cortland Finnegan, the former journeyman cornerback 
who at 5 feet 9 inches talked like he was 6'6", often before being probably reminded that he wasn't. During his NFL career, Finnegan was constantly caught on camera jawing away, trying to get under the skin of his opponents. Most notably during his 2010 spat with Houston Texans All-Pro receiver Andre Jackson, which escalated into a physical altercation in which Johnson snapped and gave Finnegan an all-time beatdown. Johnson later explained the situation saying on Brandon Marshall's I Am Athlete podcast, No, it was just, that was like three years worth of stuff, man, Johnson said. It built up to that point, and it just happened. To Johnson's credit, he not only made Finnegan rue his words from the fight, he was also torching him on the gridiron that day, having caught 9 of 11 targets for 56 yards and a touchdown, before being disqualified from action after the fight. He and the Texans got the last lap too, winning the game by a final of 20 zip. Talk about a swing and a miss for Portland. Speaking of swinging, how about our old friend Michael Crabtree, who has had a couple of all-time spats in his own right. First, there was the feud he had with Richard Sherman during the NFC Championship game. Tensions had arisen between the two division rivals all year, and they proceeded to talk trash all game, jawing back and forth like nobody's business. Unfortunately, Sherman ultimately humiliated Crabtree, first by shutting him down during the game, holding the burly receiver to just four catches on eight targets for 52 yards, then absolutely eviscerating him on national television afterwards. Aaron Andrews then asked him who was talking about him. A poignant follow-up, I might add. And Sherman explained that Crabtree had been talking all game, which was what had him so fired up. Then when Crabtree was on the Raiders, he got under Aqib Tlaib's skin so deep that the cornerback literally snatched his chain off his neck. In the middle of the game, it doesn't get much worse than that. There are also a bunch of quarterbacks who seem to love the trash talk, which, if you ask me, is a little messed up. Because let's face it, they are essentially a protected class in the NFL, so they are doing it without fear of physical retribution. But that doesn't mean they haven't been embarrassed as a result of it. Just ask old Philip Rivers, who spent the better part of his 17 years running his mouth, granted in his down-home, country-boy, good-natured way. But still, he was one of the most relentless trash talkers the game has ever seen. Unfortunately, he was rarely able to really back it up, as he and those often talented Chargers teams tended to underperform or come up short when it mattered most usually with Rivers himself as the cause of their downfall, either with an untimely interception or a failed comeback drive late in the fourth quarter. Not to diminish what the eight-time pro bowler accomplished during his lengthy career. I'm just saying maybe if he focused a little bit more on what he could control with his huddle and with his offense, perhaps the Chargers would have gotten over the hump and actually won a Super Bowl, or at least made it to one. I mean, the guy was crazy. He even jawed back and forth with opposing quarterbacks at times, one of which was a big-time chatterbox himself. Jay Cutler. Cutler was well known around the league, not only for his too cool for school attitude, but also for running his mouth when his tired facade wore down, like it did in that heated matchup against Rivers Chargers. After all, it takes two to tango. Another time Cutler came up short after getting caught up in the trash, came in a game against the Detroit Lions, and he ran his mouth to the Lions defense, only to end up losing 24 to 13. It's a tough look, especially against the Lions. And it appears that these guys have sort of passed on the tradition to a couple of younger guys we've seen these days like Josh Rosen and Baker Mayfield. It started early on for Rosen, who after dropping to 10 in the NFL draft, said of the teams that passed on him, it's always in the back of my head. These teams that kind of screwed it up and I definitely won't let them live it down when all is said and done. He even went as far to compare himself to Tom Brady, saying I want to be the winningest QB in NFL history. I want to win the most games and most championships. I'd say six titles, but if Tom Brady gets six, I'll say seven. Well, nice try, Josh. Not only did Brady already get seven, but it looks like Josh may be done in the NFL. Baker is very much cut from the same cloth. Despite being the number one overall pick in the draft, he has continued to act like he has a mountain-sized chip on his shoulder. And now he's four years into his career without much to show for it. In fact, he's done so little that half the time he's trash talking. He has to do it on behalf of his teammates' accomplishments, like he did against the Jaguars. And now he's been reassigned to essentially trash talking the entire organization that took him instead. The whole situation's a mess, and largely because Baker can't stop trash talking when he's supposed to be performing on the field. I suppose we could bookend this list with another old school guy who, like Brian Bosworth, was a star facing steroid allegations in the college ranks that had to eat some serious humble pie at the NFL level. Tony Mandarich. Mandarich redefined what it meant to be an offensive lineman during his days at Michigan State. He stood at 6'6 six six and 330 pounds of muscle and regularly manhandled opposing defensive linemen. His freakish athleticism was put on full display at the NFL Combine 
Basically cementing his status as probably the greatest offensive line prospect in NFL history. The world had never seen a 330 pound man run a 40 in 4.65 seconds or have a 30 inch vertical jump, all while bench pressing 225 39 times. Simply insane. Mandarich's ego was insane on its own right. And as he became increasingly paranoid about his steroid usage, he began to mouth off more and more during an NFL draft interview with Marty Schottenheimer when he was coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. Marty asked him whether or not he'd ever used steroids, and then accused him of lying when Tony refuted the allegation. To which Mandarich said, if you think I'm lying, then don't draft me. Which they didn't. And after seeing how Mandarich's career played out, and his eventual admission of steroid usage, Schottenheimer and co have been thanking their lucky stars that they didn't. Green Bay, however, did take him. Second overall to boot, and he rewarded them by trash talking everyone imaginable. His teammates included, he went as far as saying, I am not like other players, I am Tony Mandarich. And they have to understand that. If they don't like it, that is just the way I am and they are going to learn to like it. Again, something that he couldn't back up. When all was said and done, his four years in Green Bay made for one of the worst draft flops of all time. So much for backing up all the trash talk. Which current NFL trash talker do you think needs to stop running his mouth so much? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, we're on everything. Go subscribe, go follow. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click down below and subscribe to TPS. We post videos every day. Every day's a new video. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time.